Boise State head coach Brian Harson took a big risk starting the true freshman Hank Bachmeyer, what he thought would be a neutral side game, ultimately turned into a home game for Florida State, and things were ugly early. When you look at this football game, you see the pressure from Florida State is really getting to the guy, to the kid. You see him here. You're going to see Amari Gaynor come through the interior, and he is going to absolutely wreck Bachmeyer, bringing that pressure. Florida State early. Their legs are underneath them. They're playing with high energy, and Bachmeyer is taking the brunt of that. Boom, getting that all in his chest right there. And of course, we're going to see this as an incomplete pass for the freshman. This is a tough play to make for a true freshman, but we're watching the offensive line here, not getting their blocks under control and not understanding how to handle this Florida State pressure. I think the biggest thing for Boise State was getting to halftime, and it looked like Florida State had things under control, like this was going to be a runaway fall game from Hank Bachmeyer. The moment seemed too big for him early in the game, but as we get into halftime, the Boise State Broncos recognize we've got to make our offense, our offensive line know what to do, and we got to make Bachmeyer comfortable here in the second half. Watch right here you get pressure and Bachmeyer no problem delivers the ball to Khalil Shakir for the touchdown and that was the start of a huge second half where he's able to put the Boise State Broncos out in front after the halftime adjustments from Brian Harson. Bachmeyer third and long facing pressure throws it downfield it's caught inside the 40 yard line by C.T. Thomas. We're going to talk some Hank Bachmeyer with stadiums college football analyst our quarterback Max Brown how you doing? Michael, I'm great. How you doing, man? I'm doing fantastic. So Hank Bachmeyer, Boise State, the game gets moved because of Hurricane Dorian. You, you're playing what you thought was going to be a late kick. You're playing an early kick earlier because you're playing. You're living in the mountain time zone. You're playing at Florida State. It's a home game for them versus that neutral site. What's going through your mind as a true freshman getting your start on this stage? His heart's got to be beating through his chest. I mean, you talk about you talk about tough. This is a, a, a next level tough atmosphere. I mean, if you were lining up what an ideal first start would be. It'd be at home, easy opponent, nice and comfortable, on their blue turf, good to go. He got the total opposite. He got supposed to be a, a neutral site, now it's on the road in a hostile environment against a team that's a perennial national power most years, maybe not this year, most years, having to uh, bring his team from behind as a true freshman, uh, had to battle all throughout fall to get those reps, so didn't get maybe the full workload, all those things working against him. But Hank still got it done as impressive of a, of a week one performance as uh, as I saw. Yeah, all right, let's get into the plays here. Let's start with our first play. This is in the second quarter. Florida State here, you're going to see them work a little bit of a twist with the with the kind of a linebacker defensive end type going to get to the quarterback. I love the way that they put pressure on you. You're a freshman again. This is one of your earlier drives in the game. What's going through your mind? Yeah, and you can see it in this play right here, just going <clears throat> going through his mind. Hey, don't take a sack. It's it's third and long. Uh, don't don't throw a pick. That's almost worst case scenario is in your mind. As a result, you can kind of see him crumble in the pocket. Yes. Um, I, I think it's tough. Third and ten. You're you, as an offensive coordinator, you might be worried. Hey, I'm I'm not going to put my young quarterback in a tough spot like that. So who knows kind of the options that he's working with? But obviously not the scenario you want to be in as a. Uh, as a true freshman quarterback and as a defender, Mike, your ears are probably pinned back knowing you got a true freshman back there gearing up uh, gearing up on a big third down. Yeah, I think you, as a defender, if you're a front defender, you recognize they have to throw this football here. If they're, they're on the 20-yard line going in. They've got to throw this ball, got to put it in the air. So I want to get back there. And the other part I recognize when we get back to the top, look at, how, look at the defensive backs. Look at the defensive backs and the linebackers. They know where the sticks are, and they're going to sit hard there to make sure that everything that you complete comes before you get to the flag. And, and if I'm Bachmeyer, when I come to the line right away and I notice the DBs are that soft, I'm tapping my, my, my running back on the, uh, on the hips saying, hey, get out for me. Don't do this, 34, where it's I'm not checking the ball down, I'm not getting anyone in the blocking scheme, and I'm, I'm useless on this play. So for him, the second those DBs are soft, especially in this red zone fringe area, I'm looking high, high, and then check down right away. Use it as an easy valve. And that's kind of, you talk about next st steps that Bachmeyer can take. It's understanding those scenarios, finding his back, because that check down, you make it easier on your field goal kicker, and if he breaks one tackle, you might sneak in a first down and uh, a chance to move the ball even further for seven. Yeah, uh, Mahone right there, the running back, number 34, no, doesn't block anybody and then also isn't an option. So I think that's really interesting to point out as you look at this. And as we wrap this play up again, you just got to – I want to keep – make sure we keep dialing up 
looking at the defensive backs and looking at the, the, the defensive linemen. They're in attack mode right here. And when we get to this next play, you see how that attack mode really pays off. Here, we're going to see, I know you call it a cat, we call it a cowboy, but you're going to see this, this is a weak side cowboy where you've got a corner blitzing off the edge. We've got everybody pushing hard to the left to get to the inside so they cross the face so that you get a one-on-one. -on -one. But I will say, before we get to the negative, I will say I love what this running back does in this play. Love what the running back does. This is tough because offensively, he's got a play fake coming towards him, the running back does, and he's got to pick up the corner blitzing. So a great job. Uh, a great job here. Some offensive line coaches fired up about blitz pickup uh, drill working up uh, or paying off. But the reason this play is a sack and this tight end's in trouble from the from the get go is Mike, as you mentioned, that cat or that cowboy, whatever you want to call it, the corner coming off the edge. He now has that gap responsibility, which allows the rest of the defensive line to shift down and slide down. And right away in this gap protection, where the offensive line slides to the right. They're going to have an awfully hard time having a tight end body pick up a defensive end. So schematically, this is why you pay offensive and defensive coordinators big bucks. This is a defensive coordinator win. This is a great time called blitz. Puts Hank in a tough spot. And uh, if you're a ref and this, if you're a ref going through tape in the offseason, this is a clear cut uh, intentional grounding. If you ever wondered uh, what that was, don't really know what Hank's thinking here. I guess it's don't take the sack, don't take the sack, but. Uh, there's no one over there, so um, it's uh, it's tough sledding for Boise on this one. Yeah, this is one of those plays as a defender you absolutely love because you recognize almost immediately as soon as that tight end doesn't go out, you know that they're only playing one side of the field. This is all all to the defense's left. That's they got three guys out in a the route. They're trying to play some max protect here, and because Joshua Kando is able to cross that tight end's face and he doesn't get any help from that tackle, this is an instant. It would be an instant sack. It's an instant intentional grounding, which you know what? That's even better than a sack. I'll take it. Um, but watching this play, they're playing that half field. They're trying to make things easier, trying to make him see, make it easier for him to, to recognize what he sees. Now, the decision to throw back to the left is baffling, but I think this is going to be one of those things that we see him learn from because as we get into this next set of plays, this is the second half, Max, and we see him go from I made that mistake to I want to be better. So let's talk about him being better. Here we got a loop from that Florida State. One of the in we got a loop from the defensive end. We've got two guys rushing off the edge. This is a play that in the first half may end up as a sack or a throwaway, but here, watch how he gets through this to get to a place where he can deliver a throw. And patience is what jumps off the screen at me. His ability to stay in the pocket, trust his footwork drills, step up, find a window. I mean, he's, he's hanging on the ball for a, a good while there, and yes. rightfully so, right? He's got time. He doesn't need to force it. But that's a byproduct of, hey, maybe being in the later later in the game. He's a true freshman guy. He's got hit a few times. He's got the feel of the game. Maybe not antsy to get the ball out of his hand, settle him in the pocket. Credit the offensive line here. Florida State's still bringing five rushers. They pick it up, give him a nice pocket. But when you have this time and Hank's seen a few reps, had yep. a few completions under his belt, allows his slot receivers to work. Uh, this is a recipe for success, especially uh, in this heat, in this atmosphere with the D-line that's uh, getting a little bit gassed. Yeah, you mentioned the heat. You mentioned the D-line getting gassed. Earlier in the game, this may actually be a sack for them because of the ability to come off the ball hard and make plays. Now those legs are a little bit heavy, and Bachmeyer's able to take advantage of it. He hits Butler right there. And the other thing I noticed from the defensive back standpoint, these guys feel it seems like they're covering air. They are getting to landmarks. They're not getting the guys. They're not matching in terms of zone. You see Warner right there trying to carry. You see, uh, excuse me, you see Dontavious Jackson carrying a guy, but you have the corner, no one else in his zone, come down hard, drive down on that ball, and go make a play. And when they're just dropping to air, it, it allows quick slot guys to really confuse linebackers and, and nickel guys when they're dropping. Um, no, it's a great point. This whole game, especially as the game wore on, guys start getting tired. Fundamentals start dropping. You saw very little hands on these receivers. Yep. And it allowed Bachmeyer, who a lot of his reps are probably, I mean, seven on seven reps, those yep. type of things where the timing is, is pretty crisp. That's a, a, an exact translation over to this game where – the timing's spot on for him and his receivers. He's comfortable in the pocket, hanging in there. I mean, we did see his helmet fly off a couple times, <laughs> but nothing, nothing, nothing phased him, and he's able to uh, 
throw strikes and had a big day as a result. Yeah, it's funny you mentioned the helmet coming off. I actually pulled a different play to use in this set, but then I realized it was Chase Cord because it was one, it was one play after Bachmeyer's helmet had come off, so he had to come out of the game. But yeah, you look at this, and I just love the sliding in the pocket, recognizing where he has a guy, and then hitting him late coming across the middle. That's a beautiful play. Um, for me, watching this again as a defensive back, you've got to recognize where your guys are. It's, coaches tell you to drop the landmarks. I think that's the start of playing zone defense, but defense really takes a step up when you recognize that I have threats, I need to run to the threats so I can either deny or impact the play. And then when we get to this last play, and this is – this is my favorite. It's, it's one of his last throws of the game, but it's one of my favorite throws of the game because this is the throw that, that stops Florida State from ultimately truly having an opportunity to win this football game. Um, it's 36-31. Boise State now has the lead. They've scored 23, I believe, 23 unanswered points to this point. And you see there th third and 17, and this is the thing that stands out to me first. Florida State's tired. I mean, we watched Big 21 right there in the middle, and we're going to get to the throw, but – when you, if you're a quarterback and you see this big 21, Marvin Wilson, what are you thinking? I, I'm fine because I know he can't catch me. He can't catch me. You're probably hearing him huffing and puffing from five yards away when you're sitting in shotgun. Your offensive line's probably telling you, hey, this, these guys are gas. Let's roll. But I think you talk about it's third and 15 plus. Yeah. As a defensive back, I mean, you got to have some situational awareness where that you know what kind of routes they're going for, corners, posts maybe deep comebacks but even then that might not even get you enough so I, I i wish this florida state team had a little bit more situational awareness but as a result i mean hank bachmeyer i mean made him pay they dial up some sort of like little scissors concept on the outside with the corner route coming right to the sideline two feet in and uh, and pick up the sticks love the throw he's off platform when we roll this as well in terms of hanging in there hanging in there only rushing three and then he starts a little half roll off platform so an impressive ball i think these are the throws you saw a fade ball for his touchdown in this game. Yep. The off-platform throw here. He's running. He's moving outside the pocket. He showed the whole, the whole, uh, the whole tricks of the trade. I mean, in terms of what he has to offer, and for a young guy, it's awfully impressive. Yeah, this is why he's their starter because he can do this. I don't think there's another quarterback on their roster that comes close to completing this throw. That's we talked about it with Cole McDonald. Uh, we talk about those, 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 those monster throws, those hero throws, and for Bachmeyer. In that third and 15 plus to put this over the defense before Hamza can get there as a safety. This is what football is all about if you're Boise State, and this is why you're one and zero. This is why you're one and zero, and I think um, I mean it shows like as a defense when you're dropping eight, you are that your whole goal is to stop these types of throws. And I think your point about him, uh, this is why he's the starter. I mean. He was in a fierce battle fall camp, yes. so he's the starter and he's making those throws. I'd love to see what the backup's doing, but uh, either way, Boise State's in great hands now and moving forward for a very long time with Bachmeyer behind center. Yeah, when I look at Bachmeyer, we look at Boise State. Let's go bigger picture here. We saw the Mountain West have a good week one. I mean, they came out and they played well. If they could have got the Wake Forest-Utah State game, would have been huge for them because they took down, obviously, Mizzou and took down Purdue. Going forward as a player in the Mountain West, is Bachmeyer going to end up being one of the best quarterbacks to come out of this conference? I think so. It's definitely the tra trajectory he's on. Maybe not in 2019, but in terms of moving forward long, long term, I mean, you got to circle his name in terms of the, that next crop of guys coming up. I know the Mountain West does have some solid single yeah. callers right now, but uh, he, 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 put it, he put his name out there right away. In terms of quarterback performances week one, he's up there. And then not to mention, oh, he's a true freshman on the road at Florida State. I mean, he's got all the things going for him. And it's just, it, it's almost like a, the, the, the same story. Here we go. Boise State's found another gem behind the center, another youngster that uh, slip between the cracks. Well, usually they're Pacific Northwest guys where I'm from. They found a Southern California guy in, uh, in Hank. But uh, nevertheless, Boise State's uh, in, in great hands. And I think they also have weapons. They also have uh, a strong uh, relative, a strong conference in terms of you look at, you look at the wins they have uh, potentially down the road, a Wyoming team that just beat yes. Mizzou. Some yes. quality wins that come November, come December, if they take care of business, could be uh, could be sitting in a, in a prime bowl uh, bowl game spot. Yeah, folks, that's another episode of Tape Don't Lie from Max Brown. I'm Michael Felder. Thanks for tuning in.